there's a solution for how we deal with the problems that we face as a people. This is a round planet, folks. <laughs> there's no choosing up sides. We are all sharing the same force. The universal force from which all things emanate is creative, it is kind, it is loving, it is love. I am love. And he that dwelleth in me dwelleth in love, and I in him. Love and God is the same. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. It's a stillness and it is love. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in me. So the universal field couldn't be something that has hatred in it. It wouldn't hate what it would create, would it? It wouldn't create something that wasn't a part of what it is. It is loving. It is beauty. The universal field from which you emanated is beautiful and only brings beauty into this universe. John Keats, the most famous Victorian poet of the 19th century, who died at the age of 24 and a half, an ode on a Grecian urn said words that I didn't fully understand, even though I'd written an entire book about, uh, called Wisdom of the Ages years ago, about some of the great poets. And I quoted this one. I didn't understand it until I wrote The Power of Intention. He said, beauty is truth, truth, beauty. That's all you need to know on earth and all there is to know. Truth is what we demonstrated with Linda. Truth is the body comes from truth and it is beauty. And if you see it as ugly, you have left the universal field. You have left God. It is creative, it is kind, it is loving. It is beautiful. It is receptive to all. It is abundant, endlessly abundant, endlessly abundant. There is no limit to it. You must be in the same field as that from which you emanated in order to understand intention. I have to underline that as I conclude these remarks. When you are in rapport with that from which you were intended, when you are in a state of creativity, a state of kindness, a state of love, a state of beauty, a state of receptivity, a state of abundance, when you are in those states of consciousness, you have joined the field from which you originated and intention and you have become synonymous. And anything, anything that you put your attention on with that rapport has to materialize into the physical world. It has to, because that's how everything is created. And any moment in your life in which you are in a state of anger, hatred, or fear, grief, or anything that is not what the field from which you originally came is like, is a moment in which what you want to attract into your life is impossible. You have a choice. You can either, you can either be right and live by your ego, or you can be kind. You can either be angry or you can be loved. And at every moment in 10 Secrets for Success, the 10th secret says, wisdom is avoiding every thought that weakens you. Back in the 18th century, there was a practice in the world called slavery going on. And there was a man named John Newton who was 22 years old and he was a slave captain ship captain and he was bringing a load of uh, human cargo from Senegal in West Africa to South Carolina 125 human beings to be sold into slavery in this hideous and nefarious practice that was so widespread in the 18th 
and early 19th centuries in the world. And John Newton was in the midst of a storm and he thought he was going to die and he was going to lose his life and the lives of all of the people on this cargo, in the ship. And he took out an envelope and on this envelope he wrote down the words to a song. He said, I once was lost and now I'm found. It's in a moment that we call an epiphany. A... Uh, a moment in which um, we reach something called Siddhi consciousness. A satara, they call it in Japanese, a satari, which is an instant awakening. And he realized in that moment as he was writing these words to the song down on the back of this envelope that what he was doing was in violation of the universal mind from which he originated. That it was against the laws of the universe to treat any other human being or any other creatures of uh, life, period, in these ways. Remember what Patanjali said, when you become steadfast in your abstention of thoughts of harm directed toward others, all living creatures will cease to feel enmity in your, in your presence. Birds, butterflies will no longer have any fear of you. Such was the nature of St. Francis and Jesus and so many of the great spiritual masters. Now the storm passed and he survived, but he looked on that piece of paper that he had written these words on and he turned his ship around and he went back to Africa and he released the 125 people that he had in those holds. And he went back to England and for the next 55 years, until his 77th birthday, he became the most ardent abolitionist in the world, speaking out against the evils of slavery. In one instant, in Zen Buddhism, they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When you have that level of readiness, whatever you need, as it says in A Course in Miracles, if you knew who walked beside you at all times, on this path that you have chosen, you could never experience fear or doubt again. It would never be there for you. For those of you who've decided to quit smoking, it will be easy because you will have guidance there for you at every moment that you ever are tempted to go back or whatever it is that you want to attract into your life. And the words to that song became perhaps the most spiritual song ever recorded. And I ask Guy to include it on her CD. I play this in my car every day, particularly when things are not going the way I would like them to go. And Skyzy, if you'll come up here, honey, and close this out for these people and sing the songs of John Newton, who wrote it back in the 18th century. It's called Amazing Grace. I once was lost, and now I'm found. 